All right, here are the solutions to the review. Let's see what's happening here. All right, we need a factor. So the numerator, I want you to draw a diamond with me. And the top number is negative 12. The bottom number is negative 1. Let's see if I can clear this up. A little bit. Uh, what two numbers multiply to negative 12? Same numbers add to negative 1. There we go. That's negative 4 and 3. The denominator is a difference of squares. We're going to square root x squared and square root 9. Then we're going to write it. So the numerator now is going to be negative 4 and 3. And the denominator is going to be x plus 3. x subtract 3 for a difference of squares. Find the factor that matches and cross it out. And then that's your answer. What's left over? Let's try this one. This is, again, a diamond on top. 3 times negative 10 is negative 30 and negative 13. And then find the numbers that match. So I need two numbers that multiply to negative 30 and the same that two numbers add to negative 13. When I write negative 5 and 2, I got to divide by 3. So I can't forget to divide and then slide. So that's going to give me 15 divided by 3 is 5. And then slide the 3 in front. And we have the two factors. The denominator is also a diamond. So that's 10 and negative 7. So again, find the two numbers that multiply to 10. Same two numbers add to negative 7. So we write down negative 5 and negative 2. The two factors that match cross out. And then what's left over is our answer. It's really important that you do it first. So I want you to look here. What you can factor, we need to factor first. So x minus 1, x plus 3 are prime. The numerator is a greatest common factor. What number goes into both evenly? And they both have an x. And then divide, and you're left with x plus 3. The denominator is a diamond. So the two numbers that multiply to 9 and add to negative 10. That's negative 1 and negative 9. And then match, and then match. And what's left is your answer. OK, keep practicing with me. Number 4, can you factor? So x plus 7 is prime. Factor out a 2x, divide. And you're left with x minus 3. The denominator is a difference of squares. So the square root of x squared and the square root of 49. So we're going to write down x plus 7 and x minus 7. Now we can match. So the two x's uh, cross out. x plus 7 crosses out. So it looks like there's nothing left in the numerator. But when there's nothing there, there's still a 1 when you cross out. In the denominator, I have x minus 3 and x minus 7. Number 5, we're going to factor. So we're going to factor out a 4 and divide. 3x is prime. When you divide, you change it to multiplying. And then you do the reciprocal. You flip the last one. So we're going to factor out a 3x as we flip. And then we're going to factor this. This is a diamond. So negative 24 and negative 10. So the two numbers that fit are negative 12 and 2. They multiply to negative 24 and add to negative 10. So the x plus 2's cross out. Uh, 3x crosses out. And I'm left with 4. 2x subtract 3 in the numerator. And x minus 12 in the denominator. All right, let's keep going. Again, we're going to keep this and factor out a 2x, change it to multiplying. And then this is a diamond. So we're going to do 3 times negative 15, which is negative 60 and 4. A little bit big, but we can do it. Sorry, negative 60, negative 45. I'm going to do that correctly. So 9 and 5, those are the obvious two numbers that multiply to 45. So it's 9 and negative 5. And then I have to divide. 
And so when I divide, I divide by 3. And that's going to go in the numerator. So 9 divided by 3. And then 5 and it doesn't divide by 3. So 3 slides in front, 3x minus 5. The denominator factor out an x, and you got x minus 1. And then match and cross out. This one's a little bit tricky. x goes into x squared, leaves 1x. But then we have another x that would cross out with this. So the only thing left in the numerator is 3x minus 5. And in the denominator, I have a 2 and an x minus 1. Number 7, we're adding. To add, we need common denominators. So to get that, I'm going to factor the second denominator to know what I should multiply. So it's a difference of squares. So the square root of x squared, square root of 4. So x plus 2, x minus 2. So I can see what I'm missing. So multiply top and bottom by x minus 2. So 2 times x and 2 times negative 2. And we still have a plus 3x over here. But we now have common denominators. So now we just add like terms. So my common denominator for my answer, add the 2x plus 3x, and I have my answer. All right, the denominators are the same. So all I have to do is know how to subtract. So 4x take away 2x is positive. Here's the tricky one. Negative 1 subtract negative 4. Whenever you subtract a negative, it becomes adding. So it becomes negative 1 plus 4. That's positive 3. And there's your answer. All right, turn the page. Keep working at doing the question first to actually learn it so you can pass the exam. Here, we need common denominators. So try it first. Press pause. See if you can think. Use your black book if you need to. So we're going to multiply the first one by x plus 2, top and bottom. The second one we're going to multiply by x minus 5, top and bottom. Now we have common denominators. So I have multiplying times 1 doesn't change it. So it's x plus 2 minus... Now, 2 times x, I'm going to put parentheses around this, is 2x. And 2 times 5 is negative 10 with that common denominator. Kind of ran out of space here, but we'll make it work. Then, when you subtract, x subtract 2x is negative 1x. And then when you subtract a negative, you're adding. So it's 2 plus 10. So that's why it's 12. And then you have x plus 2x minus 5. Okay, so first one we're going to multiply by x minus 3. The second one we're going to multiply by x plus 1. We have common denominators. We're going to multiply it out. So x times x is x squared minus 3x. This is x squared plus 1x. Combine like terms and you have your answer. So x squared and x squared is 2x squared, negative 3x plus 1x is negative 2x, and then we have our common denominator. All right, next, we're going to solve equations. So we're going to write down what x cannot be. x cannot be 0 in the denominator. So what number would make this 0 in the denominator? It's 0. And then we need to multiply to make the denominators the same. So I see 2 with 6 and 6. So I know if I multiply it times 3, I'm going to get 6x squared. Then when I look at the next one, I need 6x squared. So I'm going to multiply the next one by x so it can match. So 1 times x and then 6x squared. And the last one, it matches already. So once that is, we can just write down the numerators and then solve it. So we have the numerator, the numerator, subtract 1 and you have your answer. So 3 take away 1, we can see what here. x can equal 0 and then x equals 2 because 3 take away 1 is 2. All right, let's look at the next one. You try, that's the best. What can x not be? Again, it's 0. 
make all the denominators the same by multiplying. So the first one, what should you multiply times? So press pause and think about it. The second one, I'm going to multiply by 5. Now when I do that, I need to distribute. So 5 times x and 5 times 2. The last one already matches, so I don't need to multiply to change it. So it just stays that way. So it's a 1, and then that's what I'm going to solve. So I'm going to subtract 5x. 1, uh, this is a 1. Subtract 5 is negative 4. And then 10 plus 1 is 11. Divide by negative 4, and you have your answer. Number 13, we want to write down what x cannot be. So it can't be negative 2, because negative 2 plus 2 is 0, and it can't be 0. And then I need to make the denominators the same. So I'm going to multiply this by x. The next one I'm going to multiply by x plus 2. So I have negative 3x. I'm going to distribute. That's 6x plus 12. And then this needs an x so it can match top and bottom, and 1 times x is x. That's what I'm going to solve. So 6 take away 3. I'm going to subtract 12. I'm going to uh, subtract x. And then the last step after you subtract x, I'll write it here, 2x equals negative 12. Divide by 2, and you get your answer. All right, again, what can x not be? And then can you make the denominators the same? So I'm going to multiply by 2. So I have x minus 4 minus 2. I'm going to multiply by x so that all the denominators match. And then I'm going to solve that. So we have negative 4 and negative 2. I'm going to subtract x. 5 take away 1 and then divide by 4. And I have my answer. You don't have to simplify it, but if you did, it would be negative 3 over 2, but you can write it as negative 6 over 4. All right, write down what x cannot be. You try first. Press pause. It's positive 1 and 0. And then to solve this, the denominators need to be the same, so I'm going to multiply by x. I'm going to multiply by x minus 1. I need to distribute, so that gives me 3x and negative 3. The last one I'm going to multiply by x, and then that's what I'm going to solve. So we have 4x minus 3. Oh, this one's a tricky one. When we try to solve for x here, and I didn't really mean to do it, all the x's eliminate, and you're left with negative 3 equals 0. That's not true. There is no solution here. So we would write down no solution because all the x's eliminate, which I kind of didn't mean, but you know, it happens. And there you go. That If you ever do have all the x's and there's nothing left, and the two numbers don't equal each other, then there's no solution. Now, if both the numbers equal each other, it would be all real numbers. Every n number would then solve the answer. So it could go either way. All right, let's graph. All right, for this one, this is a reciprocal. We're going to write down what a, h, and k. What do we need to remember? Opposite day h is the opposite number. Everything else is what it says. The domain comes from the h. h cannot equal 2 and y cannot equal 3. The n behavior is comes from the k. So as x approaches infinity, we can use f at x or y. It approaches 3 from both sides, whatever the k value is. And then we need to do some changes. So we have 1, 1, and we have negative 1, negative 1. We need to change it. So to change the x value, it's just the h. So 1 plus 2 and negative 1 plus 2. For the y coordinate, we multiply times a, so 1 times 1, and then add 3. So again, negative 1 times 1 is negative 1, plus 3 is 2. And our asymptotes are 2 and 3, h and k. So uh, 2, change colors, make it look pretty. Uh, 2 is the vertical, and 3 is the horizontal. This one's going to go away, of course, make it look pretty. 
uh, the 3. Maybe this one will work for me. So 2 is the vertical, 3 is the horizontal. The two points, 3, 4. So 3 to the right and 4 up. And 1, 2, 1 to the right and 2 up. And then in the middle, it goes up forever and to the side. In the middle, it goes down forever and to the side. And you graphed it. So turn the page. I really want you to try number 17 before I do it. So press pause. So I'm going to write down A equals negative 3, H is negative 1, and K is 2. There you go. I hope it matched. Remember to change the sign. So the domain x cannot equal negative 1 and y cannot equal 2, and the end behavior goes to k. So as x goes to infinity, f at x goes to k, which is 2. As x goes to negative infinity, the left behavior, the function goes to 2. So for a reciprocal, it goes to a number, and that number is whatever k equals. There we go. Then we need to change two points. So 1, 1, and negative 1, negative 1. The h changes the x. So 1 take away 1 and negative 1 take away 1. The k value we have to multiply then add. So maybe we need to write it out. So 1 times negative 3 and then plus 2. So this is negative 3 plus 2. So there's a point. We could do the same thing for negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 3 plus 2. So we know a negative times a negative is positive 3 plus 2. So those are the two points here. So 0, negative 1, and negative 2 and 5. The asymptotes are at x equals negative 1 and y equals 2. Let's see my colors. So negative 1 and what was the other one? 2. And then curve in the middle. This one's going to go down forever and then to the side because of the reflection. This is going to go up forever and then curve to the side. And you have your graph. All right, number 18. You need to do it. Then I do it. All right, press pause. A equals 4. H is 2. K is negative 1. The domain X cannot equal 2 and Y can't equal negative 1. You've done this already, right? As X approaches infinity, the function goes to the k value, which is negative 1. As x goes to negative infinity, again, f at x goes to negative 1, the k value. Then we're going to change two points, 1, 1, and negative 1, negative 1. So the h changes it. So 1 plus 2 shifts it to the right 2. Negative 1 plus 2 shifts it to the right. And then we're going to stretch and then subtract. So we're going to go 1 times uh, 4 and then uh, subtract 1, so that gives me 3. We're going to go negative 1 times 4, take away 1. That's negative 4, take away 1, which is negative 5. So, and we have our asymptotes, which are h and k. Oops, that's not h. h and k. All right, so 2 and negative 1. Uh, points are 3, 3, and da, 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 da. 1 and negative 5, and then we're going to curve. So it goes up forever, it goes to the side, goes down forever to the side. So we curve through that point, and that's it. All right, two more. So you need to do it. So press pause and try your best. A is negative 2, H is 1, and K is 3. The domain is the H. The range is the y, uh, K with Y. And the end behavior goes to k. So this function is going to 3 on the left and on the right. We're going to change two points, 1, 1, and negative 1, negative 1. So the x coordinate is affected by the h. It's been shifted to the right one. So 1 plus 1 is 2, and negative 1 plus uh, 1 is 0. The y coordinate, we have to multiply and then add. So there's a stretch. So 1 times negative 2 plus 3. And then negative 1 times negative 2 is positive 2, plus 3 is 5. Uh, and our asymptotes are h and k. So put that on our graph. So 1 is the vertical. Uh, 3 is our horizontal. We're going to plot this. 
to 1 and 0 and 5 and because of the reflection it goes down forever and then sideways it goes up forever and then sideways and there's our graph and we got one left okay let's try it so press pause your last chance to practice first and then check to see if you did it right so a is 3 h is negative 3 and k is negative 2 x cannot be h what range y cannot be negative 2 and the end behavior goes to k which is negative 2 so we have our domain range and our end behavior correct we're going to change two points so 1 1 and negative 1 negative 1 so to change 1 1 we're going to take the h and go 1 take away 3 and negative 1 take away 3. To change the y, we're going to multiply and then subtract. 1 times 3, that's 3. Take away 2 is 1. Again, negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. And then negative 3 take away 2 is negative 5. And that's what's going to go on the graph. The asymptotes are h and k. And then we'll put those on. So negative 2 and negative 3. So here's negative 3. And negative 2. The points. Negative 2, 1. And negative 4, 5. Okay, got that. No, something went wrong. So let's try it again. So negative 2, 1, and negative 4, negative 5. That's wrong. So why did I think that was wrong? Because these reciprocals are in corners. So if they're beside each other, that's no good. Or if they're underneath each other, they're no good. They have to be in the corners. So that was not in the right location. So I saw that I did something wrong. So negative 4 and negative 5. There you go. I made that mistake for you. And then we're going to curve up forever and then sideways, curve down forever and sideways, and we are done. We we're going to practice. You did that. We're going to study now. This and our black book, right? Get a good rest. Eat your breakfast. We're going to do great when we do the exam. Mr. G-Math, over now.